go ahead and get started. So today we are going to be talking about our container management. The purpose of this product is to help companies that bring materials or inventory from other countries or other states or in containers, uh, whether it's the receipt of POs or the transfer of inventory that they have in another country. You'll find out that our container management is sitting under purchasing and there's very little setup that needs to be done. Um, <clears throat> sorry. You need to set up the containers that you're gonna be using. So very basic information, what is the capacity of the container? Um, does it go in a ship, a train, truck, other, all of the above? and so on. The other setup that needs to be done is um, the embarkment locations. So most of the customers that we deal with actually deal with China. So you set up the embarkment, give it a name. Is it both embarkment and disembarkment? Are we moving inventory back and forward or is it just an embarkment? And um, what country is it in? So as you can see, we have set up a few. Just as an example. And third, last but not least, um, under purchase order preferences, we want to make sure that we tell the system which default in transit warehouse we're gonna use. So when you receive the POs into the container, they go into a in transit state and we need a warehouse in order to do that. So here we're telling the system which warehouse we're using. Um, and that's about it. This stuff here is, um, is default, it's installed when you install the system. So I think that's the main that the main uh, setup that needs to be done there. So now I'm going to go into the container orders, but before we do that, we need a purchase order. And what I wanna do is I wanna use the Lego 500 piece set. And what I wanna do is I wanna start by showing you how does this, uh, what are the quantities that we have right now for this particular inventory item? So if I go to my warehouse details, <clears throat> you will notice that my wholesale warehouse has 40 and my retail has one. So we have a total 41 items on stock. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a purchase order and I'm gonna buy some more of these Lego sets. Uh, come on. There we go. So I'm just gonna use my go-to vendor And um, I'm gonna use the main location. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my Lego set. I'm gonna bring them into my, uh, I think it's the wholesale. Yeah, I have 40, I'm gonna bring them into the wholesale location. And I'm gonna go ahead and order a thousand of them. So we'll have a lot of inventory. Uh, once I'm happy with my purchase order, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. As you can see, we have set up approvals. So the purchase order does need to be approved before it can be put into a container. So now it's approved and it's open. So now 
we have received notification that they're ready to be shipped. So I'm gonna put them into my container. I'm gonna create a container order. And there is different things we can do. Let's say, for example, we have multiple POs and they come from different vendors. I can create a, um, one container that has POs from multiple vendors. But the other thing I can do is if I have multiple containers coming on the ship or a train or whatever, I can create a master container order that includes multiple containers. In this case, we're gonna leave it simple and we're just gonna create one container order. Uh, the priority, I know a lot of this information is for the use of the customer, whatever data they really need to keep track of. So let's say this is a medium priority. Container ID, this is the two containers that we had set up. So I'm gonna use my ABC123. The in-transit warehouse, as you can see, um, came from the default that we use, the shipping line. Um, something to note about this. So I'm gonna use Costco, but then I wanna go into the vendor file and show you guys a little something. When I go into my vendor, if I'm gonna be use this vendor um, as a shipping line, Costco is a, it's a, shipping company, then we need to check that vendor is a shipping line. And how many vessels does it have? This particular shipping line has three vessels. And you will notice that in my locations, these are the vessels. And if we go to one of them, you will notice that it says that this location is a shipping vessel. So just a little bit of SEPA set up, I'm sorry, at the vendor uh, level. Okay, so we're gonna use Costco. Where, which warehouse do we wanna bring the shipment to? So we want to match our PO. So wholesale is the warehouse that we're gonna bring the shipment into. Where is this PO? Oh, one more thing. So let's say, for example, there's a lot of our customers that manufacture items in China. So they have a warehouse there and then they just transfer the items into the US. So in that case, what I'm gonna say is I'm just basically transfer them from one warehouse to another. Like we said, in this case, we're gonna do a purchase order, but know that we can also use this for transferring. So in this case, I'm gonna say that I'm embarking in Shanghai and I am disembarking in Seattle. Um, we can, uh, if you want the default vendor reference number, if there's such a thing, if they give you a specific number, there's other data that we can um, that we can save. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now we're ready to add a PO or a PO line to our container. I'm going to go ahead and add the PO that we created for a thousand of those Lego sets. <clears throat> and it's this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and add and close. And now we have added the PO. Um, <clears throat> other items that we can track the container number, the container tracking number, the different dates. A lot of people use this in order to forecast when their inventory will be arriving. Um, and you can see other items here. We also calculate the paid load. So um, <laughs> obviously it's not liters, but 
based on the information that's set up at the item level and based on the information that we have on the container, we're calculating the payload. So now that I have set up my container, the next thing that I want to do is tell the system um, the quantity shipped. If I try to, well, first of all, I'm going to take it of hold. And it's telling me that I need to tell the system how many are my shipping. So let's just say that we got a thousand. So the whole thing. Here's something interesting. Um, if we're shipping less, we can put less. If we're shipping more, we can put more. But the quantity that's shipped may not be the quantity that's received because maybe something broke in the trip or, you know, multiple reasons. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to go ahead and release my container. So when I release the container, you will notice that immediately is going to give me some additional information here. It's going to tell me when it was released and it's going to create, receive that inventory into a in transit warehouse. So we'll see that here in a minute. Um, you will notice here uh, that I have a PO receipt number. And if I want to take a look at that receipt, you will see that it received my thousand items here. And if we want to look and see what happened on the general ledger, I can go to the financial details and see that it updated my account uh, 12,100, which is my inventory account. And it added the quantity and the dollar amount. And it that the credit side is to my accrued purchases account. So right now we have received the PO and we have updated our balance sheet with the correct information. Let's go back to our container order. And now we have this container order here in transit. Um, if we populate all the different dates, then we can then see when we're supposed to get it and so on. We have created, in essence, an uh, inquiry, inquiry screen here that gives you all the different in transit, in receiving, received, any open orders that have not been released, anything on hold, and so on. <clears throat> so now, two days later, three days later, whatever, a week later, um, maybe we get a, an invoice for the customs or the insurance duty, whatever. So I can start bringing in my landed costs as I start getting those receipts. So let's say, for example, we got the freight invoice and it's invoice that and uh, the amount is $1,500. And I can keep entering. One thing that we do is that we allow you to enter these invoices as they happen. In some cases, this uh, landed cost invoices actually come in after the product is in the warehouse and some of it may, be, may have been sold. So we allow you to update the landed cost as needed. We know that in a lot of cases, it takes a long time for you to get the invoice for the landed costs. So um, if you want to create the, the voucher for the vendor from 
when we release this, you can do that. Otherwise, it will you will have to match it at the AP level and create the AP invoice. Totally up to you. So let's assume that at this point, we are now, we have received the inventory um, into our warehouse. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start receiving. And then when I start receiving, I can either receive it all or I can, um, I can receive just uh, less quantity depending on how I wanna do it. So right now I'm just gonna say receive it all and it automatically plugs in the 1000. But what I wanna show you is that, let's say for example, I only got 950. So then what happens here is that the system will automatically create a return because initially we told the system and we received the PO for a thousand for a quantity of a thousand. On the opposite side, if I say that I receive a thousand fifty, then you have an option. You can either, um, let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Uh, oh, this is not moving great here. So either I can do an inventory receipt or a purchase receipt for the additional 50, or I can do nothing in which case your inventory is gonna be out of, out of balance. So for right now, I'm just gonna do the 1000 and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and complete my receiving. As I do this, oh, I forgot to show you something, sorry. So here, let's see. Not yet. So action, I'm gonna complete my receipt, my receiving. And you will notice that as it starts completing the receiving, it's gonna provide you with information in this area. So first of all, it's gonna create a transfer order because right now that inventory was sitting in my in transit warehouse and it's gonna put it in the warehouse that I originally uh, requested. Um, it's gonna do a receipt at the destination and it's gonna tell me the date that it was received. <clears throat> So we'll give it one second here to finish posting all this. Oops, something happened here. Under cost transit. Oh, I know exactly what this is. Darn, I forgot to change a, this is my fault. I was playing with the purchase order preferences and I told it to create a, a bill when receiving the landed costs. And unfortunately, this system is set up for approvals. So right now is expecting to approve the bill, the, the bill before it can release it. So that's I'll show you that it created the that it created the correct items. It just didn't release the AP. So before I go there and I will show you that, you will notice that uh, that we don't have it here. There we go. Here's my transfer of a thousand items. And if I want to look at that transfer, you will notice that it went from the in-transit warehouse to the wholesale warehouse. <clears throat> so the other thing that happened was that if we look at the item, as you remember, we used to have 41 in stock. And if everything worked, we now have 1,041 in stock. 
And last but not least, if I go to my payables, bills and adjustments, we have this $1,500. <clears throat> and it should be pending approval. And again, that, that was my fault. I should have not do that. But if you wanted to create the bill and you didn't have approvals turned on or you had the right rules for approvals, then it would have created the bill at the same time that the container was released. Um, I'm gonna open, if anybody has any questions, I would love to hear the questions. Uh, So no questions, okay. So some other items that we have, um, we have this mass processing. If you have a lot of containers and you wanna remove them from hold or all at the same time, you can do it from here. If you wanna release, you can do them all from here, cancel so on and so forth, you can do directly from here. One more thing, we have created a mobile app. Ooh, come on. It won't let me, that is strange. It won't let me push it to that side. Okay, there we go. We've created a mobile app and I have my phone here, which is what you're seeing right there. And um, we have, oops, wrong one. We have the container here and you will see that it has all the same information. This is the one that uh, we just created. It's received. So we can go ahead and finish it up. There's my container details, a thousand Lego sets. <clears throat> so from here, if I wanted to, for example, this one is in transit, oops, this one is in transit. And from here, I can say receive all or complete receiving if i don't know i i didn't do this one so hopefully there's nothing wrong with it but um i can process special especially um if the people receiving are in a warehouse and you want them to have the capabilities of using a handheld device to receive the the po directly um uh, okay Okay, so like I said, I didn't create that that uh, order, so we're gonna. But the the mobile app is just the Akimarika mobile app, and somehow I lost. Did I close it? I did close it, didn't I? And if you. go down and you see the container order. So that is our, our container software. Um, if you guys have any questions, if there's anything that I didn't answer or that I didn't cover, please let us know. Um, Rick will be happy to help you with, uh, if we need to schedule a demo. This video will be on our website. So let us know if there's, anything we can help you with or any information that we can provide you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them right now. We've got one question, Patricia. Okay. Um, is using an in-transit required? Um, yeah, 
And the reason for that is because when you receive that container, you're basically receiving that inventory, but that inventory is not available for sale at that point because it's in the middle of the ocean or somewhere in the middle of the United States, wherever it is, you know, it's, it's in the middle of being transported. So you don't want that inventory available for people to issue picking tickets and packing slips and stuff. You want to be able to, uh, you want to be able to know that it's there for one, because it needs to be in your books. It's already an asset for your company, but two, because then you know that it's coming. And if you're getting an order, you can tell people that, that, yeah, we will receive it on this day. On the other hand, you don't want that available to be picked. Well, what if you don't want ownership? You're not what going to take ownership of the goods until they arrive and you inspect the goods. Tell me, what do you mean no ownership? Well, you, you use an in-transit warehouse means it's on my, on my books as an asset. And I have some customers that prefer not to do that. They may prepay some of the purchase order, but they don't want to own the inventory until they actually receive into their warehouse and they inspect it for damages and it's the right goods. Okay. Um, I don't know that you can, well, you could create the container order and not, not, um, not putting the receipt until the very end. The other thing that I've been requested by some customers is there a tool that when I'm placing a purchase order to build a container, in other words, adhere to the container limits? Um, I don't know that we have a tool right now that will stop you I mean, it will give you the information, but it will not stop you from overloading the container. But that's a good suggestion. So tool to build a container. Yeah, they, what they're trying to do is they, they, they receive in 10 to 20 containers a week and they want to, they want to do one PO per container to simplify life because they're buying in large volume. And they want to know when they're creating a purchase order, you know, is it going to require more than one container? Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. I will ask um, our dev team if that's something that they can do. They'd actually like it in MRP, but that's another story. No, that's a whole different story. Yep. <laughs> yep. Any any other questions? Um, rejects, I, I, it's on the water, it comes to my dock and I find out some goods are damaged. I, I assume I just have to go through the standard process for doing a PO return. So actually, I don't know if you noticed, but if, if uh, on the, let me go back to the container. If you, so the container has two different stages, basically. One is the quantity that was shipped. So they say that they shipped a thousand, but then I think I show you that if they receive less than a thousand, then the system will automatically create a return. Okay. Let us know what your customer requirements are and you know if we can do it. We're constantly improving and changing and adding and based on customer yep. requirements. So just let us know. 